Hello and welcome to Talking TSM, the Game House's talk show about TSM's LCS team. I'm Robert Haynes, your host and your guide into the world of TSM's LCS team. And I'm coming to you today with episode numero two. Wow, I, I, I did that so wrong. I'm sorry, that was probably partially insulting. I don't know Spanish. Number two, episode number two. I'm, I'm tired. I got to record like four hours worth of stuff today. So, um, well, I guess, yeah, it probably will end up being, well, no, maybe not. Probably be closer to three, but whatever. Um, recording a lot of things today, including the second episode of Talking TSM, which is why, again, I'm wearing the same stuff. Um, I wanted to make this episode specifically a little bit more, um, well, less newsy related. Mostly due to the fact that while I am gone, I have no idea what could be coming up next or not. The only thing that we do know is that MSI is going on and that we will be getting, you know, uh, how would I put this? We'll be getting another, um, you know, week at least of EG playing uh, as they have made it to the Rumble stage. I I worry. I think they should be. They hopefully will make top four and make it to the knockout stage. That would be uh, ideal, to say the least. Uh, I think they will likely be the fourth team there, unless if RNG are just tired from having to play at home. Um, but, yes, that was a subtle dig. Um, not at the players, but just the decision. Anywho, I, I wanted to make this one have a little less, uh, you know, connection to what is going on at the time just because of the fact that yeah i, I just I, I can't predict the future you know oh here we go uh, yeah i got a got a message message coming in okay and that was wrong i have seen the future tsm are going to replace evil geniuses at msi why who knows the lcs just likes tsm so they will be there now you're welcome no that was probably a terrible joke. I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I wanted to talk actually today a little bit more in depth about why I got into TSM as a whole. Because I think I do this in the first episode, which is almost 100 episodes ago now. So like, you know, hell, like 100 hours worth of stuff, you know, uh, ago. And... I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about, about like my connections with TSM and, and all of that because I don't think I really did a good job of that back then because I think I recorded the first episode pretty much right as Bjergsen was retiring. So I think I think the first episode, if I remember correctly, I can go back and check, but I'm pretty sure it's like an ode to Bjergsen or something like that. Uh, and then right after that, you know, Double If retired. So it was just like just news, you know, galore right then and then you know they were building out the team with sword art and everything so I, yeah i just want to talk a little bit about you know how i got into tsm and um you know i and, and then i'd love to hear you know how you all got into tsm in the comments i think that would be great uh create some some really fun discussion you know for me it was it was really interesting so when i started league of legends uh, I, it was in, I think, 2011, 2012, somewhere around then. I want to say closer to 11. I was there pretty early on. And uh, it was my buddy Chris, and he had been playing this game called Heroes of New Worth, I believe, which was similar to Dota more than League of Legends. Um, and it kind of came out as this, you know, as MOBAs really became a thing-ish, it was one of the early ones. Uh, I don't even know if it's still around, to be honest. But, uh, you know, it, it's funny. He kind of described it to me, and I had played something similar in StarCraft. There was a mod uh, that people had made that that was seriously like a, you know, they had towers. It was a, There were maps and stuff. I mean, it was, it was really, really fun. Um, some of the mods for StarCraft 2, by the way, were freaking awesome. There was like a Risk one that was super fun. I don't know, just a whole bunch of crazy fun stuff. But, um, yeah, so, you know, this League of Legends kind of just appealed to me. I thought, well, this, this looks interesting. I'll give it a try. And, uh, you know, you know, funny enough, my, my friend said this, and, I, and I'll never forget it, and this is one of my favorite quotes of all time. He goes, 
you know, hey, we're going to play this together. And and I want you to know I love you. Like, you're, you're, you're one of my best friends. Um, but I'm going to yell at you a lot. I'm going to I'm gonna say some pretty terrible stuff to you. Uh, you can replace stuff with the other S word. Um, do not take it personally. It has nothing to do with you. It's just what comes out of me in this game. Uh, so from, from day one of my experience with League of Legends, I was... Um, I was shown this, the, the toxic side of it from my friend, uh, which is probably why I don't take toxicity all that seriously now uh, in terms of, yeah, I just, you know, whatever. I just mute everybody when I play. And, you know, we played our first game, um, and I had no idea what I was doing. I was a controller player my entire life. League of Legends was the first game ever that I can really remember using mouse and keyboard, like, in a in a, in a competitive way. I had, I had played competitively uh, Star Wars Empire at War before this. Uh, I was one of the top people in that game and one of the and, and owned one of the top guilds in that game. And that was my competitive gaming experience up to this point. So not all that complicated in terms of actual mechanics. It was more strategy and, uh, you know, just outmaneuvering your opponents. But, um, you know, for this game, you know, I, I get in there. And, and at this time, by the way, uh, Twisted Tree Line was the only map, I'm pretty sure. I want to say I'm, I'm like 90% sure that was the case. Uh, at least it was the only one that I played. And uh, I, I, I picked Ash because that was the character that they had shown you how to play at the beginning. And uh, I was terrible. I mean, truly god-awful. Uh, I, I ended up getting one kill on an Enchanted Crystal Arrow. And just firing it down the lane to somebody who he had already almost killed. And uh, I think I ended up going like 122 and 8 or something like that. And so, uh, you know, I played a couple more games with him that night. And I was like, ah, this game, I guess this isn't for me. I, I suck at it. Well, then I started seeing like some advertisements about League of Legends, you know, a couple months later. And um, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try to give it, a, you know, another go. And yeah, I mean, in my senior year of high school, so 2011, I was playing like every day. I was hooked. I mean, I remember, you know, waking up in the morning a half hour earlier and I would eat breakfast and play a game of league. No joke. Then I would go over to, uh, you know, and then I'd, you know, it'd be, we'd be watching a movie and uh, I'd be sitting on a couch with my mouse on the armchair and my laptop in my in my lap with the sound down and we'd be watching a movie as a family and I'd be playing game of league to say I was hooked was was an understatement and so I wanted to get better because my friends like back in the day back back really in the day I'm gonna date myself pretty substantially here um if I hadn't already uh they still had where you could play as teams and grind ranked as a team. So instead of having Clash, like it was literally just 5v5 teams and you could see how highly ranked your team was. And me and my buddies thought we were so good, man. I, I think we got to gold at one point. We're like, oh, we're, like, we're climbing. Like this, is like this is easy. Like we're doing really well. And so I was learning the top lane. And uh, this, yeah, this is, how, this is how we're getting to the TSM part of it. I promise. We're getting there. So... I needed to learn a new champion because all I was basically playing at the time, I think, was like money making Gangplank. <laughs> I think it was, I think it was Gangplank and um, God, I can't remember who else. Might have been Malphite, something like that. You know, some I think even a little bit of Mundo, old Mundo. And I started, and this was in the summer of 2013. I started looking up videos and guides of, you know, how to play the top lane better. And lo and behold, what would come up was how to proxy farm with Singed by Dyrus. <laughs> and so I watched these videos. I remember before going into my biology class in college, um, I was taking a summer class. And I would watch these videos with my girlfriend at the time who knew nothing about the game. And she would always be like, oh, I, that's... Uh, that's interesting and you know i'm learning how to do singed and then i go out and we start learning how to do singed and uh you know and then i would play the game on and off again for a little while 
and it would be not until really 2014, 2015 worlds that I would sit down with my friends and watch, and they would say, hey, who are you going to root for? I was like, I don't know. Oh, there's that Dyrus guy. I'm going to go for TSM. And ever since then, I've just, as I've watched more and more of the LCS, specifically really starting more in like, you know, 2016, I've been hooked. You know, I've been hooked. I, I just, I fell in love with Bjergsen specifically. Um, you know, I thought that, that he was just an absolute beast at the time. Um, and I was lucky enough that, you know, when 2016 came around, that was when they picked up Doublelift and Sven Skarin. And I was like, oh, wow, like, dude, this, this roster was freaking fun. You know, I mean, that was the that was the Hauntzer, Sven Skarin, Bjergsen, Doublelift. Um, and I kind of forgot about Kasing. I remember Yellowstar joining the team. And I was like, dude, this team is this team is fun. They're good. You know, and I just happened to end up picking the best team in the freaking North America by, well, a pretty, um, you know, a, a, by a pretty large margin. So it was really cool to to watch them, you know, uh, just kind of, I don't know, become this really good team. And I was like, I don't know. It was it was kind of like as I was you know coming up with the game house and stuff, and I was learning more and more about League of Legends because I'd kind of taken a break for a while there. Uh, I was playing more CS:GO at the time and trying uh, some of the other MOBAs. There was this one from um, from EA that had come out. I think it was like Origins or something like that. I can't remember. It was bad, but whatever. Um, and then there was like Master X Master or something like that too, and I just tried all these other ones, and um, you know, I just ended up finding my way back to this. And yeah, I mean, ever since then, you know, we've just we've kind of just watched TSM do 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 its thing. Um, and and it's funny because you know, it was it, even while I've been you know a fan of TSM and I've watched the games for you know a long time, it was really over COVID that I I think I really became like a diehard fan, like not like a you know, like I was a, I was a fan for sure. I would root for TSM and I'd watch most of their games and stuff. But uh, and I and I remember, you know, actually it wasn't over 2019 or 2020. It was. Let me check here, guys. Sorry, one second. When did Biofrost join? Here we go. It was 2017. I want to say summer. It was really, yeah, it was 2017 summer because the game house had just been asked to become an endemic source for, um, you know, for uh, the LCS. And that team was the, you know, Bjergsen, Doublelist, Senskaren, Hanser, and Biofrost team. And I was fortunate enough to watch them go win in Boston. And I remember at that press conference, just soaking it all in, you know, that that was back in the day when Hanser wore his headband. If you remember, God, I wish he still did that. Um, you know, and, and that was like the first split uh, that they had brought in, brought in, that they had brought double lift back. Uh, and, you know, between him and Biofrost, Hanser was so good at the time. So Skarin was young, just coming into his own, had really kind of started to figure himself out, and Bjergsen was, you know, the GOAT already, basically. And it was just, I don't know, it was just really cool to to watch this whole thing kind of play out. And then, you know, as I as I did, you know, and then, you know, of course, Doublelift leaves TSM to go to, to Team Liquid, and you know, watching that team really kind of, I don't know, become its, uh, become what it, what it, what it became. It was really cool to watch. And, you know, 
I, I even remember like Mike Young coming in and being like, oh, this guy's going to be the next great jungler. Obviously, sadly, that didn't work out. But um, yeah, I just, I don't know. There was just something about TSM that like, yeah, winning was fun, but they also had such great personalities. And, you know, it's funny that, that, that even while I'm not a top laner anymore, like I really haven't played top lane since like 2012 or 13 or whatever. Um, outside of Bjergsen, my, my favorite TSM members have been their top laners, uh, you know, for, for a while now, you know, between Hanser, Broken Blade, and Hooney. I just, I love them. I don't know what it is about TSM and top laners. And I wonder if Soul is going to be the same way. I, in the last episode that you guys will have seen, uh, a couple days from now, you know, I, I talked about how I think Soul is is really good. I don't know if he'll be the face of the franchise, but I think he's going to be a really fun and interesting player. Um, and and I'm and I'm very you know, I, it's just really funny how you know some of these players and stuff they stick with you. And I think that that's what you know between TSM Legends and just even the personalities that TSM has had. I think it has been absolutely incredible to see this team kind of i don't know do do what it has done you know i mean they they really have have helped create some really incredible characters in the league and and you know watching you know the Sven Scarens and the Hansers kind of leave and go do their own thing and find success elsewhere and you know Biofrost even with his awesome you know um uh, incredibly brave announcement that he recently made you know, and, 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 you know, even Zven, watching Zven, you know, I, I always felt like he was kind of like the villain of the team, but I think the way he played was, was, was interesting. And I think the passion that he had for the game was kind of unmatched, but, um, you know, it's, it's been really interesting to kind of talk with all of you through this last year, because, you know, as you can see, like my favorite players, you know, again, Dyrus, Dyrus was gone by, by 2016 and you know when when i was really starting to watch right you know with the with the the bjergsons and the haunters the biofrosts and stuff you know i i just you know this year was was a huge change for me even as a fan and even last year to a certain degree well actually last year almost specifically like but at least we had bjergsons still in the background helping and building this team out but you know, this was, um, I guess now we're getting past the, the, the time where I've told you guys about why I became a TSM fan. And I think I'm going to just tell you now about why I'm, why I'm staying because it's, it's not just because I was doing the show or whatever. Um, you know, I could have stopped that as soon as Bjergsen and double if left, uh, I would have, I think been like four episodes in and nobody would have known or cared, but you know, I think this was a challenge obviously for, for all of us, right? Not just because Bjerg left, but because the TSM that we've loved and known, you know, what has been the, you know, the 1975, 1976 Big Red Machine for, for baseball or, you know, the Patriots for their dynasty or the Yankees, you know, or the Warriors, you know, uh, with their dynasty or the Lakers, you know, whatever, um, whatever sport, you know, at least in the U.S. that I can name. <laughs> Uh, that you enjoyed, this team was that. And still is to a certain degree. But they chal- you know, it, it was a challenge for our fandom because Speak is kind of the last bit of connection to all of those players. And, you know, I guess you could say K's, but even K's is not like, he's not forward-facing enough for us to feel, I think, the same connection that we do with some of these players. And so I really do think that, you know, this last, especially these last five months have been a real challenge. You know, they have really, they have really pressed on us, you know, here and everything that we have seen about, about Reggie and, um, you know, seeing Bjergsen find success elsewhere. um, You know, it has been a, a bit of a roller coaster. And, 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 you know, and tying it in, funny enough, to our conversation that we will we'll have had the last week, 
you know, the future of this team is going to be one that I think the reason why everybody's freaking out is because we're in such uncharted territory. And when we look back on these old rosters and these old names, you know, I mean, it is it is daunting to kind of wonder what is next, who is next. I mean, we are truly in a new era after eight years eight years of watching these team you know this team have all these incredibly awesome and, and 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 interesting people you know i mean funny enough the only player still playing from back in the day is wild turtle although i think his time is is sadly up um you know as a as at least a starter in the lcs but we'll see maybe if lost doesn't perform well then they might put wild turtle back in but um you know, all these players are, they're gone, you know? I mean, they're either gone or they're, you know, they're playing on other teams or they've retired even, you know? So it has been, I think, such a such a culture shock for us as fans that, you know, I think the, the last bit of the Band-Aid when Spica leaves is going to be, that that will be it. That will be it. We will no longer have that tether uh, to all the success and to all the other things. And so, you know, as a fan, I encourage everybody to continue to to support this team. And that's why, you know, weeks and weeks ago, I was saying, hey, if you're a real fan, you're going to stick this out. And, you know, to a certain degree, honestly, I think I was convincing myself even a little bit. Well, I'm, while I am a diehard fan, and I think I've confirmed that to myself even, you know, watching this team struggle for the first time and, and wondering what is their future going to be? You know, what is the TSM of, of 2023, 2024, 2025 going to look like is really in question now. You know, it was always, oh, we got Bjergsen. We got Bjergsen at least, so we'll, we'll figure out the rest of it from there, right? Well, Bjergsen leaves, Okay. Oh, oh, now he's a coach. Oh, okay, we'll we'll deal with that. All right, well, at least we have Spica. You know, that's good. They'll, you know, build a good team. Oh, we got PoE. Awesome, great. Oh, PoE's gone. Oh, Bjergsen's going to leave and come back as a as a as a player for Team Liquid, huh? Wow, that is that is crazy, huh? Well, at least we still have Spica, right? Oh, Oh, this year's been so bad. Speaker's probably gone, isn't he? Oh yeah, like there there are wholesale changes coming in. Oh wow, like this is this is a real, a true end to the era, isn't it? And I talk you through that scenario because I think I think that that is I think that's what we're going through right now. I I I really genuinely believe that. You know this. You know, from from start of fandom with with the with the Dyruses and the Reggies and the Wild Turtles and everything, you know, heading into heading into now, you know this 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 will probably be it for the for the I think the past era of TSM, the first eight years, the Great Eight years. We're gonna coin that, the Great Eight years of TSM at least for the LCS franchising portion of it. You know, that's, that's going to be it. You know, this, this, this will be it for us. And while I am, you know, obviously a little sad, um, I am, I am very intrigued by what is going to be coming next. Because um, I, I just can't help but during this time period think of the future. And I, I'm not going to try to make every episode like this, you know, of the future. And and, and by the way, like, I do have plans for um, some guests to come on. Um, and, you know, some things that now that my life has kind of slowed down a little bit, I can do. I can bring back the graphics and everything else, um, which I'm excited about. But I can't help but think about what our future is going to hold as fans. And I commend everybody who has stuck around because 
I can tell you that as a as a traditional sports fan and as a as a uh, specifically you know with the Reds and the Bengals, um, watching them rebuild time after time after time, there is a sense of excitement that comes with that, and there is um, you know a sense of oh well could this guy be the next big one for us? Could this guy be this or that for us? And as I've said in the last few episodes, there's some there's some players that I'm very intrigued by. And I think that the plan, the puzzle pieces are coming together. But again, we kind of need that face. I hope Spica stays and I'm wrong, but I think it's going to be a change. And I think when this new era comes in, I think it's going to be on us, you know, as players or as players, as uh, as fans to embrace it and to you know, accept them as we did when Bjergsen stepped in for Reggie or when Doublelift took over for Wild Turtle or when Sven Skarin came in for the first time, you know, coming in after Santorin <laughs> and Biofrost. Broken Blade. Sven, Mithy. Soon to be our friends, most likely. Spika and Huni. Even to a certain degree, Reggie being gone. As fans, whether you started this split, that'd be really impressive if you started this split and are, are fans still. Um, <laughs> you must really like one of the players. Um... Or, you know, if you started back when they, they really got started in, like, you know, 2011, 2012. If you're back from then, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is it. This is the brand new era that we will be beginning here soon. And I personally look forward to it. I'd love to know what you guys think because, uh, and again, I'd really love to know what your stories were of how you came into, to love TSM because, um, you know, now it's my my fandom has spread you know i love watching their apex team or their rainbow six teams i think they're really fun and interesting their valorant team you know i i watch as many tsm teams as i can and players as i can now uh and it's it's all started because i watched a video on how to proxy farm a singed with dyrus in it it's funny it's funny the 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 webs that uh, that we weave in the worlds that we create from small and interesting decisions, uh, just as simple as clicking on one YouTube video. I don't know. It's interesting. And even from your friend telling you that he is going to be toxic and you still playing the game a decade later. Imagine. Well, I know this is a shorter episode, but uh, I wanted to, you know, to, again, make something not time sensitive. And I wanted to kind of put something out there that I had, you know, I don't think I'd really expanded on in the past. So um, I hope that you guys like this one. I'm sorry if you don't. It's fine if you skip it. I totally understand. But hopefully you'll enjoy it. And hopefully, you know, it'll bring up some good memories uh, uh, of, of, your, of your time becoming a TSM fan and where it has taken you and where you're at now. So if you like this show, please take a second to like, subscribe, and comment if you're watching on our YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss another episode of this or some of the other shows that will be coming out here over the summer. It's going to be a summer of shows, friends. Oh, we could use that. Summer of shows. I like that. I want to make this and hopefully continue it being the number one TSM LCS podcast out there. Please leave a review on any podcasting platform that you are using. That would be greatly appreciated. Share this with your friends. You can join the TSM Discord. We're getting new members like every week now. It's been kind of cool. So hopefully you guys will join it too. You can find me on Twitter at TGH Robert Haynes. Or you can find the Game House at TGH Esports. Lastly, head to thegamehouse.com to see all the awesome content that we are putting out there for you. And with that, thanks for tuning in. This show comes out every Monday during the off season and is exclusively for your TSM ear holes. I'm Robert Haynes, and this has been Talking TSM. I'll see you all in a couple weeks.